wanted to shoot an intro video for you guys um, and give you a little bit of an idea of what you guys are going to see um, with the channel and what to expect. Um, this is going to be for anyone that is a part-time mechanic all the way up to a full-time drag racer. After a lot of talk and you know conversation with my wife about what we wanted to do with the car and, and the upcoming racing season, uh, we decided to film a little bit of what we do along the way. Um, I'm behind the eight ball on the fact that I've had the car for about three years now. Um, and I'll just give you guys a little history on, on everything. So, um, I bought it as a running, driving, just, uh, stock LS1 T56 car and was able to turn it into what, what I have now, which is basically a full on drag car. Um, the initial intention was to have a cruiser, just something we could, you know, go have fun with on the weekends, you know, take it out get dinner and a movie, stuff like that, um, and get just kind of slowly spiraled into what I have now, which is uh, tube front end, tube suspension, um, you know, no interior roll cage, uh, basically everything you would expect from a drag car. Um, I want to be able to uh, take the time to like, you know, have instructional videos for you guys step by step, whether you want to do a just a bolt-on car or you want to do a head cam intake car or you want to do something like what I have here um, you know I wish I would have filmed this process along the way so you guys could have seen it step by step but unfortunately I'll just be able to show you guys what we have and moving forward from where we are now um, right now the car is completely torn apart it's just a roller um, no engine no transmission um, it has, you know, it's all, it's wired and all that. But the first thing we're going to start with is the fuel system. You guys will get to see that firsthand. We're going to upgrade everything. Um, fuel pump setup will stay the same, but we're going to go dash 10, uh, upgrade the fuel line size. Um, it's one of those things where I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, you can make a lot of power on dash six. You can make a lot of power on dash eight. Um, and this may be overkill for what the car currently is now, but last season we were kind of chasing our tail and trying to upgrade as the season went along and we never really got the chance to go out and race because I was consistently running into issues and um, you know the engine and the turbo and everything wanted to make more power than what uh, my fuel pump setup could do at the current time so I had to add another pump and uh, just a lot of things that come with drag racing. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is give you guys a walk around the car and show you you know, the ins and outs of what we have and, and I'll be able to uh, attach a photo or a video and I'll, I'll probably put it right here in this video so you guys can see what the car was when we initially got it. The second day I had the car, I was already tearing the entire interior out of the car. Um, and that kind of started the process of, you know, we did uh, a turbo kit on the car and then I realized, well, now I need to, you know, I need to upgrade the transmission and I need to upgrade the rear end. And then, you know, I wanted to go to a standalone harness and then that turned into me wiring the car completely from scratch, which, um, I intend to do videos on all of that, um, instructional videos on what it takes to wire one of these cars from scratch if somebody feels that they need to do that, um, dash removal, um, suspension components, um, I ran all new brake lines on this car, everything's uh, stainless brake lines, you know, it has um, everything, it's got line lock, it's got uh, full manual brakes, um, proportioning valve, all that good stuff with the brake system. Um, so what I'll do now is take the time to give you guys a walk around in the car and see what you guys think.
I'm going to start off by saying that the rundown and the walk around of the car is just going to be a little bit of show and tell and a quick description of everything that we've done to the car. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you guys a how to on every little thing that we've done along the way because all these upgrades have been done since I've had the car. And like I said, I'm really behind the eight ball and I wish I would have filmed this from the very beginning to show you guys everything that was done when this, when I had, when I had it and I stripped it all the way down and it was just a stock roller to building it up to what it is now. So what I'll do now is just give you a little walk around the car and I do plan on touching base on what it takes to do the front suspension on these cars, what it takes to set the aftermarket K member in place, what it takes to do a, your fuse board relays and all your, uh, your switchboard and everything. If you want to wire a car from scratch, um, and take you guys on a how to video for each one of those processes. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with showing that we went ahead and did a uh, tubular front on this car from Rock Solid Motorsports, um, all chrome ollie. And I went ahead and everything on this car that was once bare metal, um, we did pour 15 on everything. Pour 15, um, their base coat that goes on bare metal, and then we finished everything off with the top coat that has the UV protectant on it. So basically everything that really holds the, the weight of this front, you know, tube front end on this car is the lower bars here. So they come right off the frame rail and everything, this is all, this car was loaded up on a trailer and we kind of, I wrapped everything up in saran wrap to keep all the connections and everything from getting any type of corrosion or road grime or anything in there. So sorry about that. But, um, the rock solid motorsports front end comes with plates that weld here and weld here. And then from there, uh, you weld your bars on here and this is all one piece fixed bar that welds onto your lower support. And then you have your crossbar here. And then upper bar here that welds onto the other side. Now what we did do is the outside fender support was cut off the car for rate, weight reduction. And we welded in, um, I guess you could say gusset like support brackets um, in order to support this bar, which actually doesn't really bear any weight. Um, I actually have these LED lights that I use as my headlights um, that I can that I can move these around if I decide I want to put the bumper back on the car. Everything fits under stock fenders. Everything fits under the um, stock bumper. Um, the only thing that I would have had to have modified was the hood when I go to put the hood back on the car. But I basically run it with no front end. Um, the rules of the small tire class that I race in. Uh, does not require a front end, so we probably won't want run one on the car. Um, but extremely happy with how this turned out. Everything on this car that was um, that's been done with the electrical, the transmission, the motor, suspension, anything chassis related, I would like I said was I, I did myself. But all the fab work, a uh, local buddy of mine did this two front end out of Pennsylvania. Uh, did a really good job with that. And I will actually go ahead and attach, I do have some photos of the process of that to show you guys step by step on how he welded everything up and getting things up out of the way and what the finished product was when we actually got it back. So I'll insert that um, right here in the video. And the we just got the car back from the fab shop getting the firewall blocked in, which turned out really great. Um, the car still kind of masked off from whenever that was done. Um, 
you know, didn't want to get any overspray on anything. So it was bare metal fabricator primed it for me. I just got done. I just got done painting it and it turned out really good. Um, so that's really happy with that. Did the front Lexan front, front window when he had the car. Um, BMR tubular K member, chrome Ollie, everything on the car is chrome Ollie. Um, the front end, the K member, the suspension components, the cage, I believe everything in the rear of the car is chrome Ollie. Try to get it as light as I possibly can. BMR lower control arms, dual adjustable coilovers, stock spindles. This stuff is very, it's so easy to do. I mean, if you, if you guys, and I can give you, I can give you a how to rundown on how to install these components, but it's a lot easier than what you think to do this on these cars. I mean, there's, there's a handful of bolts that are, will give you a little bit of trouble to get to, but I'll be able to give you guys any type of, any type of questions that you may have on any of these fourth gen, uh, Trans Am Camaro cars. Um, comment, ask me questions. Um, you know, I can get, I can get you guys an answer is if I, if I know about it or I've done it, which you can tell in this car, um, I can help you guys along the way and, and, and try to answer any questions you guys may have. So from the suspension, got my weld weight racing, well, racing, uh, <laughs> wheels, that I love. These things are about 11 or 12 pounds a piece. One of the main reasons I got these TBM front brakes. Those things are gangster. Lexan front, Lexan side, carbon fiber roof. Billet specialty rears, Hoosier tires, CO7s. CO7 tires is kind of the way that that I think all of us go uh, in my area for no prep, the services that we race on. Awesome tire. That's the only tire that I'll ever use now is the Hoosier CO7. Love those. I won't really, really be able to lay up under the car to give you guys a a full look at the suspension. I'll, I'll have another video that I, that I attach on my channel later. So rear into the car here, as you guys can see, which is the flashlight's not really the best way to do this, but, um, trap door, um, triple fuel pump setup. Walboro 535s, um, and we're actually going to upgrade the fuel system, and I'll be able to show you guys the new lines and everything we're running for that. This fuel pump setup that I currently have is good for about 13 or 1400 horsepower. This is still a E85 pump gas um, front mount intercooler car. Um, you know, and I'll get into the details more of the fuel system and why we went this route in some of my later videos, but you guys will be able to see that firsthand where the first thing we're going to do on this car is the fuel system. Here is my assembly that I made for holding the weight in the rear of the car. I can use my plate weights and slide those on. And there's a lot of geometry and stuff into, you know, why I put it here and the way things are angled and how stuff mounts up. But then I won't, I'll get into that with a, one of my, you know, one of my later videos that I post. Like I said, this is just going to be a quick rundown of the car. Overflow tank. Uh, we ran the this up through the trap door. And if you ever were to pressurize your coolant system from lifting a head gasket, uh, you know, and as long as you don't push coolant out of the freeze plug, which will happen on a stock cylinder head, but most aftermarket cylinder heads uh four ls motors don't have those so but i can tell you right now that right there kept me from wrecking this car um, i lifted a head on one of the first times out and this jug was able to fill up with coolant 
um, and then it got some down in the rear of the car, but it kept me from putting coolant up under the rear tires of the car or, you know, under the car in general, it kept me from, you know, wrecking the car. Compressed air set up over here. Everything on this car is compressed air. Uh, wastegates, um, instead of using CO2, we did the Vi Air air compressor kit. And it comes with, uh, you can see the compressor, the tank. Um, I ran, I went ahead and routed all my lines for that. Um, and then the actual um, tube that you're seeing coming off there, the uh, pneumatic line is for, I wanted to be able to air down or air up my tires to whatever PSI I needed. So I went ahead and added that in so that I could, you know, do what I need to do if I was on a no prep surface, if I was at a track, depending on what we wanted to do with the car. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. That turned out great. This whole setup really I love. That's mounted in the rear of the car. Um, start back here and talk about, it is a uh, seven five cert, I believe, uh, 10 point cage with a uh, dash bar and some door um, door bars. And I apologize about the lighting guys. I'm doing everything out of a one car garage. So just kind of bear with me. Everything that I do is basically off of jack stands. These uh, race ramp wheel cribs I just bought. Absolutely love these things. But, you know, I got more parts than what I know what to do with. And I kind of got to walk sideways in here and kind of do what I have to do. You know, desperate times, desperate measures. So, give you a little look at the inside of the car here. All my wiring and everything is mounted here on the, on the back side of the firewall inside the car. And I am gonna do a whole instructional video on, you know, and attach photos and everything of this process. If you've ever removed one of the dashes in these cars, you can kind of see, uh, you know, I mean, you you know if you pulled a dash that it can be a nightmare. And you're kind of like, what did I just get myself into? So, you know, power comes in and it comes in over here on my, on my, you know, my terminal block and comes over to my fuse panel, goes to my relays here, which then um, go to my switch panel. And then from there, they come down to my terminal blocks here. And this is what powers down here is what powers my devices. All my inputs and outputs are wired here. And some of them are up top up here. Um, you know, I have an MS3 Pro Mega Squirt, uh, or excuse me, Mega Squirt MS3 Pro ECU. Um, everything, inputs and outputs and power sources and switches and all your relays and everything will cross over directly to Holly, Fuel Tech, whatever it is. Um, a lot of it will be MS3 Pro specific. And, and we'll get into all that in a later video. Um, precision performance air shifter. Uh, you know, stock steering column. Motion race works. Um, buttons on the steering wheel. Love those things. Just a regular old NRG Amazon special steering wheel. Quick detach on the stock steering column. Probably make a video about that as well. No interior anywhere, as you guys can see. Uh, turbo kit, just kind of laying in the car to kind of make room, running out of garage space, but you guys will see the whole install of that as well. Full one-off custom turbo kit. Love it. And then you can look around the back of the car and then show you where my lines run. So I actually have my air compressor lines here that run to my first regulator here that I have wire or uh, excuse me, plumbed in for, I believe this is my air shifter. And then the second one over here is for my wastegates. So I run dual wastegates on this car and have them set at different pressures and everything. Like I said before, you know, this car, 
everything being compressed there it makes it super well, let me go ahead and show you guys this too the uh i have a 300 amp uh breaker that i use which that actually saved this car from having a whole lot of problems i had an alternator failure on the dyno and it backfed and actually tripped this breaker Cut, popped a couple of my fuses but was able to keep the ecu from frying itself um, having a voltage issue with the car so you know, I'll get into the wiring. I have the battery mounted in the back, which you can't see in this. You might be able to see it back there. And I just bring my power up, up here, tie it into the to the breaker, and then run it down along the car here, and then just wire it all into that, into my fuse panel, my relays and everything. But uh, as far as the compressed air though, uh, a lot of people will run CO2. This car was actually CO2 to begin with. Because of where I live, it wasn't the easiest thing to just fill CO2. Um, you know, I would think a sporting goods store or something would have it for, you know, guys that paintball and everything, but a little bit harder than what you would think. So I went ahead and, and switched over to compressed air because, you know, if I, I, I kind of was like, if I wanted to fill bottles, this would be a nitrous car, um, but it's not. So we went with compressed air. That's a really good kit. And what I'll probably end up doing is actually attaching a lot of the parts that we use on the car. I mean, a lot of this, that switchboard, Amazon, relays, Amazon, fuse board, Amazon. I mean, half of this car is probably Amazon. I mean, might as well have a sponsorship from Amazon at this point. But that's just a quick rundown of the car, guys. I mean, you'll get to see, like I said, step by step. Um, I'll be able to show you guys the build of the, I'm going to do a walkthrough on the transmission. Uh, I built that on my own from, you know, start to finish everything. I'll, I'll give you a walkthrough on the transmission and everything we did to that in one of my later videos. Um, just, uh, it's a quick, uh, quick little deal is just that it's a turbo 400 transmission, uh, billet parts second gear leave basically everything you can do to it and then we'll touch base on that in one of my later videos but basically you know no side mirrors i got my little little inserts that i made to cover up carbon fiber inserts to cover up the mirror openings but just all the little things just really start to add up so I'll be able to give you guys a um, quick rundown of like the suspension and everything that in one of my one of my videos where I'll get up under the car and I'll be able to show you guys everything about go ahead and shut this alarm off. Um, I'll be able to show you guys everything about you know the suspension stuff that we have done to the car and you know dive into the chassis stuff and and all that and you guys the first thing like i said will be the fuel uh fuel lines i have those pulled off the car um here i'll actually show you now so this this was my dual feed that i had and what i'm going to end up doing is i pulled everything off and i'm going to lay out my new fuel lines bigger uh we're going to go to dash 10 everything so what I'm going to do is lay everything out and just make my fuel lines exactly how these are because nothing's going to change with the new intake and the the fuel rails or anything like that. So um, you guys will see the finished product on that. That'll be the first video that that I make that shows you know the process of putting the car back together, and then we'll go we'll dive into the transmission. Just got my converter back from circle d uh pete is pete's an awesome dude um you know really took the time like i'm no one special but uh he took the time to spec the converter out to get it right for the car for what we want to do with it so uh you, you'll be able to see that you'll be able to see that uh piece go in um and then we're going to start on the motor and just work from top to bottom so you guys will get to see that whole process so just stay tuned thanks guys